Hi there and a warm welcome to this video. I was supposed to do another live stream about this, but our Wi-Fi had been really off. And so I thought, I don't want to let that stop me. I just started last week getting back into this project of refinding my creativity and I want to bring you along. You know, when you say that you're publicly, that you're going to do something, it's the best way to hold yourself accountable. So I mentioned last time that I want to really develop this project that is also have that also has a touch of mental health and for all of us to feel better because creating with our hands is really this it really has this magical power to just make you feel great and I lost a bit of that energy in the last month and I want to get it back so I've been really thinking about what should that project be the first live stream that I did last week about uh, this was just showing you the current work in progress the pattern program of July now, since then, I've been thinking, well, what could really be a great, more um, dedicated project when it comes to dealing with depression, anxiety, stress, things that can really have a huge negative impact on our lives? And how can we really just find a concrete way to deal with it? So many of you guys that are with us are so because you discovered embroidery when you were not feeling great and then embroidery helped you to feel better and in fact for Charles and I it's the same thing embroidery created with our hands drawings just uh, really any type of creativity makes us feel so much better so whenever we lose the habit whenever life gets overwhelming and we stop creating we immediately start to feel worse so this is going to be a project it needed to be a few different elements that it has to be um, a low entry level when i say that it means it needs to be not too complicated not too overwhelming not too many strict rules to follow right this is more going to be about free hand uh, embroidery it's involving inviting you to dare to just try it, to also be able to adapt it to what you like and your preferences. So I was also thinking about different colors and how different colors impact us. I'm always encouraging you to use colors that you like. Uh, they are always going to have a more positive influence on the whole process if you enjoy the color, right? Um, but there are, in color psychology, for example, there are uh, quite a lot of studies on how different colors do have an impact on our mood in different ways. This is why companies, for example, are using different colors in their marketing uh, to just help to influence your emotions and thereby your purchasing behavior, right? Um, but in general, we're thinking about the warm colors, the red, orange, yellow as bringing joy, energy, uh, but also the negative side of that is maybe anger. Um, strong emotions you have the cold spectrum with the blues greens um you have the white there as well which is more calmer soothing relaxing um but it can also then on the negative spectrum be a bit sadness and things like that i want to focus on the positive effects of the colors because this is for the sake of bringing back energy right um as i'm sticking through my colors i found these fantastic variated floss that we received as a gift from I'm gonna pronounce this correctly CGT uh, it's oh, it says here cottage garden threads from Australia and these are hand dyed with um, by cottage garden threads it's a mother and daughter in Australia that are doing these absolutely wonderful I'm gonna link to them below it's been quite a while since we received these actually last sometime beginning last year I think uh, but I've still got a few of them left we got two of these uh, rolls of them and we have one left and I thought that's the perfect thing to do because I want to work with colors today that makes me happy um, they even put this super cute note uh, that this color palette was inspired by your colorful artworks and little rugs and paintings so with that these colors they also brought the inspiration of actually i want to take out a canvas i just bought this in the dollar store this is um roughly two dollars 20 crowns in sweden is roughly two dollars 
It's just a regular small 20 by 20 centimeter canvas. And I want to stitch a project straight onto this, okay? So you do not need to have an embroidery hoop for this type of project. I wanted it to be something that right away will become a cherished artwork with colors that I love and a soothing stitch process. So we're going to work with repetitive stitches. We're going to use almost exclusively the running stitch a little bit maybe of split stitch in there, but it really needs to be this intuitive stitching with colors that you love, or I'm going to use the ones that I love. Um, and through these live series, or today it's not a live, but through these videos, whether it's a live or just um, a video update here on YouTube, uh, I want to bring you along in this project. And hopefully at the end of it, I'm going to just be back into my creative habit okay um, this is really this is really the goal and I want to um, invite you into that process right so this is a great beginners project but it's also a great advanced project it's really for everyone uh, everyone who just needs to get their their creative juices going again so my idea was um, using this canvas and I was also thinking so we had first first right it needs to be something that doesn't feel too overwhelming so I took a not a too big canvas it's a relatively small one it needs to be colors that you enjoy that bring that harmony I'm going to be focusing on quite a lot of blues because they make me calm uh, and it's soothing but then uh, also the 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 inspiration for it it's going to be abstract but in Inspired by something I love, which is the ocean, blue ocean. I think it fits perfectly. I want to have it inspired by the ocean, and I'm thinking kind of like a sunset to also bring in some of that energy with oranges, red, um, the sun setting. Um, I also want to work with the texture, thinking I'm going to do everything horizontal, um, maybe mix in some different. I actually found here. Um, some some different types of fluff. We've got some wool, some with um, glitter in it as well, um, as well as these cotton ones. I don't really know how this is going to end, okay? I just want to show you a little bit the materials that I'm having. Also, a cruel embroidery needle here. Uh, I believe it's size 1-5. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I think so because it's my favorite. So it's the one I've got the most of. But it's really just, I, 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 we're going to see, okay? We're going to see where this takes us. Um, as I wanted to have, uh, it's always good when, when you're starting a project like this, it's always a good idea to have a rough inspiration. So in case you are more interested in learning more about different abstract uh, theories, theories, concepts, um, techniques, and things like that. We actually have a full workshop with a Introduction to Abstract Embroidery. I'll put the link below this video. It's of course also included in the Academy membership where you get all of our courses. So that's really a choice by you if you want to just have the abstract one. But one of the things when you want to do abstract embroidery, it's quite a good idea to have just a rough inspiration from before. And um, that is where my sunset, beach, ocean type of um, scenery is coming into my mind. So it just helps me to break that white canvas fear. It's just so freaky to look at this white canvas, especially when you haven't been creating something for a while. Like, I'm just, okay, I don't even know where to start. I've literally been thinking for a whole week now what I'm going to do. <laughs> And that is not productive at all. You, you just need to start. That is why I didn't want to let our bad Wi-Fi connection uh, these last couple of days stop me. So I decided to just record it instead. When you do that commitment, try to stick to it. There's always going to be obstacles in the way that makes it easy to say that, all right, I can't do it. But once you've committed, just keep that commitment to yourself. So 
Uh, I want to bring you along for just the start of this. I'll be working on it also off camera. Um, but I want to um, just kind of do a first stitch along the middle of this. Um, I don't want to do it too exact. I'm just kind of looking with my eyes, rough estimate of where is the middle and using that as my baseline. I'll just do a long uh, stitch, kind of cutting the, the whole canvas in half. This gives me a good starting point of what part is going to be focused on the sun and the sky and the other part is going to be focused on the ocean. Now, I'm not going to do only these long stitches. This is just for my reference. I don't wanna just um, yeah, do super long because I want to really get this texture as well, which you only get if you actually make proper stitches. All right. So I'm just starting here with some split stitches going down, placing them a little bit randomly. The whole point here is just to break that blank canvas fear. You might hear kind of like a strong popping sound as I'm stitching. That is because this is a cheap canvas. It means it's a already treated canvas. Ideally, when you embroider directly on a canvas, you want an untreated one. It, it avoids to leave holes in the canvas afterwards. However, these, the, these treated ones, on the other hand, um, they create kind of, I'll show you here, they create kind of lasting holes. If I would just make, make holes, you can see them here. So that is really the difference. But as I'm planning to cover the whole surface, I don't really care. I wanted low entry level also for the, uh, the reason of not having a too expensive, too expensive project, because then if you need to also purchase a lot of materials and I mean, we know how it goes, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be done, especially now. It maybe just feels very overwhelming to spend a lot of different materials. So look through your stash, take whatever materials you've got at home and get started there. All right, my first cloth is almost finished already. I'm going to be focusing on placing these stitches kind of a bit spread out and then go over the same area multiple times. The main thing that I want to kind of the only thing that I want to keep um, static is maybe not the say, right word, but um, keep the same is the fact that I want to have all of the stitches horizontal. Because if I start mixing too much in uh, varying directions and all of that stuff, I'm, I'm thinking it might get overwhelming with a lot of colors and also a different directions of stitches. It might just feel like a big mess. Personally, at least, um, as I've been struggling with some postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, um, stress and overwhelm in different ways, due to life events and obviously baby. Um, I want to focus on something that won't overwhelm me. I know personally, if I'm going to start now shifting directions and everything as well, I'm going to get way too overwhelmed. Just not a good deal. All right, that was already the first. I'll just pull out another. Um, and it's really, really intuitive. By the way, these ones, they are so smart. They come in this beautiful package and on the back side, you have all of the instructions, uh, but it's so great because you can keep them in there and just pull out, let me see if it works now, one by one. You know, the classic when you <laughs> want to show something uh, to the camera and then it just doesn't work. Like, yeah. Uh, I've been doing this for seven years now and it it's always the same. You do it off camera, it goes smooth, it goes quick, and then you put on the camera and there's always something happening, like here, threading the floss, the threading um, the needle. But I have learned to not, not get hung up on it too much. Let me see, let's focus.
This one doesn't want it. There we go. Sometimes threading with a full strand uh, can be a little bit tricky, clearly. It happens to all of us. It doesn't matter how many years you've been at this. So I hope that um, at least that can break the ice a little bit for some of you that might feel overwhelmed um, by the thought of it. I receive a lot of emails from people asking uh, where to start or how to start because they're beginner and they feel, feel for example, that the different um, architectural designs that we have feels too difficult. Abstract embroidery is a perfect way to start if you feel overwhelmed by any type of design. It's a great way to familiarize with different techniques, different stitches, also with a different material, especially with the cloth. Um, it's a really, really great way to just get into it. And you can see also now stitching with full strand, it makes you advance a little bit quicker, at least it gives the impression that you're making advancement, which is also a psychologically beneficial thing. Uh, I'm actually gonna go wild and crazy and just pull one all around. Why not? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll keep it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do that everywhere yet. Um, time will tell. All right, soon getting to the end of this one as well. So I'm going to attach it on the other side. You might have noticed that I just start with a knot. I don't want to complicate it. And when you are stitching directly on a canvas, it's usually a little bit difficult to fish up some threads in the fabric on the back side, which you might do when you are stitching on regular fabric, regular cotton fabric. It is, by the way, a cotton canvas. I believe it's, uh, it doesn't say here, it just says canvas, um, but it's a cotton canvas. But instead I'm fishing up a part of a floss that I've already um, used to stitch. I leave a loop and I pull through. So basically making a knot on both ends. And I always cut it off right after because otherwise if you keep leaving the floss hanging, at some point it's going to just become a complete mess and just a bit too thick layer of floss to really um, be able to push through and personally I I just think it's again it's contributing to this whole thing of just feeling like um, not that you're under control but just that the, the whole artwork is it's it's not just a complete mess So I'll make another one here on the water. My idea with the sunset scene and this blue, but then also up here have this strong, powerful sky. Um, it was a little bit to also um, be able to, depending on the day, depending on how I'm feeling that day, be able to sometimes work with the blues if I feel just very stressed out, I can work with the blues and calm myself down and just feel the smoothness of the repetition of the stitches. You see, it's very basic, basic stitches. And on days where I feel that I just need some more energy, then I can go ahead and work on the more powerful sky. But you can already see that using variated floss for this type of a project, it's a winning, winning deal. Colorful floss 
just adds quite a lot of excitement, I think. The great thing about stitching on a canvas that is already stretched out is that once you're done, it's all ready to go. You can just hang it up right away and, and everything will be ready. So that is, that is quite convenient. It also lowers the bar a bit um, in the sense of you don't have to overthink too much of how you're going to use it, where you're going to use it, and all of those things. It's really just a focus on the process, really focusing on making it happen because, you know, no creativity or um, creative handwork, artworks is going to help you unless you actually do it. And that is really our mission with the whole Charles and Ellen Academy, that we want to provide you with different types of projects for different moments, different moods um, that really inspire you to just try things, try different types of techniques, different styles, meet you where you're at and just to get it happening, get it done. Right now, um, I believe we've got about 37 courses in the Charles and Ellen Academy. And that's one of the reasons why we bundled it up together into the Academy membership so that you can access them all for just a tiny fraction of the price of what it would be to just purchase them all. Um, so that is really also our way of trying to be a inspiring resource for you where you can watch uh, lectures within perhaps even topics that you wouldn't have think or thought that you would have liked. Um, but as they're all in included anyway, then you can try this and maybe you'll discover that you like something. I remember um, one of our members, Becky, she tried the interior design course and she told me afterwards that she never thought she would like it and then she ended up loving it. So um, that's something I love about it. And this, for example, this type of project for you who are perhaps new to Charles and Ellen, um, you might not know it, but it's actually me stepping out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I usually love to make architectural sceneries. It's, it's my go-to. I was even thinking to make uh, an architectural scenery for uh, this canvas. Uh, but then, you know, the whole thing of like trying to decide which a house to make or which city to make it from and looking through pictures and just making the decision of what I should make became just too big of a decision that I ended up not starting. I've had this canvas lying around for a couple of months already. So that's why I decided I need to get back to basics. If I want to inspire you to get started, I need to just make sure to, to show, inspire myself though, but I need to show myself too that, you know, it's just a matter of getting started. And hopefully by the end of this project, and by making this process public, hopefully I'm back in my groove and maybe the next canvas is going to be an architectural one. Who knows? This was a pretty cool thing, I think. I'm going to keep it. Never done it before, but I'm, go I'm digging it.
Okay, attaching again the flap. So I think that was kind of like my 15, 20 minute uh, me time of the day. I need to go down to attend to my babies again. Um, and that is another actually thing I love about embroidery that as soon as you've gotten started, right? You still need to start. As soon as you've gotten started and you know what you're working on, you don't require extreme amount of time to still make progress. And I find that to be a very comforting thing. We literally just did about, I'm not sure if it was 15, 20 minutes, 25 maybe even, um, and I already made quite some, quite some progress. So 15 minutes a day, I'm, I don't know, maybe this will take me most likely more than I expect, but maybe one or two weeks, we'll see. Uh, I'll keep you posted anyway, and hopefully the next time will be a live stream. I'd love to have you on with me, but at least this is better than nothing because now we are back in business and there is going to be more creative videos coming your way. And if you're new here, warm welcome. I hope you really enjoyed hanging out with me. Um, I sure enjoyed having you here. And um, check out some more of our stuff in Charles and Ellen Academy. All the links are below. We've got some free resources there as well if you're completely new. And of course, all the videos here on YouTube as well uh, that you can check out first before you um, see if it's for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.